What is going on, everyone? We are here with another spotlight interview series. I mean, we're just we're over 30 artists. I mean, I just it's crazy to me how far I've come with this series two years now. And I've met so many amazing singers, songwriters, producers, and all kinds of stuff. Um, we're talking to Noah Smith today. Noah, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing well, man. It's starting to get cold up here in Ohio. So, uh, but man, it's it's good. I feel like I'm finally back in the groove of things today. I feel like this is the my January 1st, if you will. But yeah, it's, it's good to be here, brother. <laughs> no, thank you. And I appreciate you just taking the time to do this. And I know for sure. I mean, it's it's been cold as hell up here in Boston, too. So, I mean, it's it, it's not <laughs> yeah, as fun, I was saying but... that. I'm like, I know who I'm talking to. I need to I need to check myself on complaining about the cold. So. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's just it's crazy. These last like year or two with the weather and stuff like one day in the summer, it's hotter than hell. And then the next thing I know, I'm freezing my ass off here. So it's just it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but kind of before we get into the whole interview process and kind of before I go through some of my questions is, is why don't you let the people know a little bit about just who you are um, and just where you, where you are and what you're doing right now. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Anytime I give a little shout out to what we're actually cooking up. My name's Noah Smith. I'm from a little place called the uh, it's called Brown County, Ohio. I would say the great state of Brown County, Ohio. Uh, I'm about an hour east of Cincinnati, Ohio. So if you, uh, everybody knows Cincinnati, because it's always in the Disney movies where like their distant cousins live, they're always in Cincinnati. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a touring songwriter, artist. Uh, I produce some. I'm also an independent artist coach. Um, I launched something brand new called the Long Cut Mindset, where I'm actually coaching and building a community for independent artists, support masterminds, just kind of coming together and stop pushing each other off the mountain so much and helping each other rise and uh, just learn and grow and uh, kind of every day grind it out. But uh, at the end of the day, man, boiled down, I'm, I'm a songwriter and an artist. Uh, my wife's a beautiful photographer. I've got three boys and uh, just living in the little Midwest dream here in Ohio. And uh, really, really excited. Just put a record out and uh, excited to be on here chatting with you about it and just doing a thing, man. We're back at it. I feel like we're back in the groove. Yeah, no, for sure. And like, I think I was telling you a little bit before the interview, I just this week coming up is definitely going to be like my January 1st too. I'm getting back in the groove <laughs> of everything. And I love what you're doing right now. Just everything that you just said, because kind of at the end of the day in the music industry, making those connections and building those kinds of relationships and stuff is just a really, really powerful thing in the music business. Yeah, man, coming up, you know, I, th I think it was just, it's just the way of the world If in the, in the music industry. If, if you're a marketer or you're, if you're in a marketing or uh, sales or realty, you know, there's all these business to business groups and these conferences and different things you can do. Um, as an independent artist, you know, it's really, when you start talking to a lot of people, uh, you just kind of get this, like, just keep grinding, kid. Like, that's kind of all you get. And people just tell you to keep going at it. Um, you, you know, you waste a lot of money, a lot of years just trying to figure it out. Now, I will say that that is part of this craft. It's part of being an artist. It's part of, of figuring out. It's sitting in the back of a, of a ballroom with a guy, you know, an older fella smoking a cigarette, telling you his truths. And you pick up a little bit along the way and you pick up a little bit along the way. And next thing you know, it's uh, it's a pretty cool life to live. But uh, yeah, pouring into others has been been a really cool uh, thing, and my coaching's been it's been incredible. I'm not at the top, you know. I'm, I always say there's there's thousands of hundreds of music gurus that'll tell you they got the answer, but I'm not at the top. I'm not at the bottom. I'm not really about tactics. My my uh, membership community is actually called the Long Cup Mindset because it's not about like, hey, here's these tips and tricks to get famous or get rich, get your songs on Spotify playlist. There's people that do that way better than I do. I just believe that there it's time to change the conversation and there's a better way to go about it. Right. Um, definitely after 2020, you know, when we got knocked off, off our feet and we couldn't tour, uh, it's something that just really spoke to me. And I thought, Hey man, if I can surround myself with some people, if I can pour into other people, what a way to give back to an industry that's really, you know, blessed my life in, in many ways. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's exciting and we'll, we'll see where, where we go the rest of this year. Yeah, no, exactly. And I mean, it's just, it's cool to really just see people's stories through music. I've done so many interviews and met so many cool artists and songwriters and producers and stuff like that. And it just, it's always just really cool and unique to just have this moment to do all this oh, stuff. For sure, man, for sure. So yeah. kind of getting into the first question. Um, I always start with the basic of basics. Everyone knows that is just where did music all start for you? How did like singing come about, like playing the guitar? Just where did everything start for you? Yeah, man, true, it's true, true little story. I was uh, um, a creative writing kid that kind of fell in love with writing in like seventh or eighth grade. My teacher used to let me bring in like little mixtapes. I literally was like making cassette tapes earlier on. And then I started burning CDs and uh, and we would she would put music on and we would just free write for like, 
you know, we would just literally, you could write anything. You could write poems, you could write stories, you could just write, just put it down, just put it down. And I fell in love with that process. Uh, my great uncle, David Francis Smith, my late great uncle, David Francis Smith, he, he's a poet. And every year he used to, at Christmas, he'd bind up some of his work and he'd give it to me. And some folks in my family kind of like jarred at me a little bit, like joking about it, like, oh, Uncle David's giving Noah's poems again, you know. And But man, that spoke to me and it made me realize that like words mean something and there's something special here. My best friend, uh, two years older than me growing up, he got a guitar. Uh, it's actually a really killer guitar that someday I want to like, I'm trying to buy from him. Uh, uh, it's a it's a 1970 Strat and uh, it's amazing guitar. I didn't realize what I had as a kid, but you know, sitting around in circle, learning, just watching other people play guitar chords. The next thing you know, you start playing some chords, mm -hmm. and uh, that was you know eighth grade freshman year, and the rest is history, man. We started making bands. We started uh, we booked shows at this old church that used to have like youth night, and there'd be a bunch of screamo rock and rock and roll bands out there uh, partying in the church basement after the basketball game. We'd all head down there. Um, there was a pool hall in my whole town that we used to move the move the tables out of the way and the owner would let us put on shows and so at a very young age like it was all about putting a set of songs original songs together um, and putting a band together and playing shows you know 30 45 minute sets and that's all I did until you know my late 20s I never played any cover songs I never played cover music I didn't know even what that meant or how that looked it was kind of a punk rock spirit of like write the songs, produce the songs, record the songs. I'm sitting in my home studio. I'm still got a little bit of that spirit with everything I do. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where it started, man. And then I think, you know, you look to your left and right and realize you're the only one that's still doing it out of that crew that you went to high school with. And uh, I mean, I got some buddies that are incredible musicians that I grew up with and it was really cool for a little town that we live in. There was there's so much talent out here. Um, and I really think, uh, you know, during quarantine and, and definitely in 2021 um, when things were kind of opening back up, I think people started opening their eyes up to really what is here in this, in this, in this city and people started being proud of it. So, um, but yeah, the rest is history. Here we are and I'm making records. And I always joked that my dream as a kid was to have a van and a trailer and uh, you know, out my driveway, there's a van and a trailer. I'm like, that's it. I don't know what to do after this other than just rinse and repeat and keep growing and learning and, and loving every day. No, exactly. And that's what it's all about. It's all about that grind, just that hard work and all the time and dedication you're putting in and stuff. And I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Like you just said, like the people from like your town and just like around like that are musicians and stuff like that, because I know I've had some people on the show. I had one kid from my hometown that we'd, um, he's a musician, yeah, musician down in uh, Nashville right now. And then I have another friend from New Hampshire and stuff that's down there too, just doing the work and it's just, it's crazy to see all those small town boys just kind of come up and do what they're meant to be doing, you know? Yeah, man. I was just in town in Nashville last Sunday through Thursday. So I go down and I write songs Monday through Wednesday, most of the time. And 2018 and 19, I was hitting it heavy. I was down there most of the week, mostly every week and then come home on the weekends when we tour, but I was just back down and uh, my buddy, Matthew Douglas Simpson, he's an incredible songwriter from uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, he's been going down. We've been writing together a little bit more with other people. And I, I told him that I, I you know, we were, I brought that up. I said, man, the one cool thing about Nashville is people can have a lot of opinions about big cities and Nashville being the circus of a tourist town. But the one cool thing about Nashville is, is the folks that are in that town putting in the work in music will remind you that you are a working artist and that your music is a business. And there's a lot of that, you know, when folks that are in their hometown and never get out and tour and they just, you know, they got a band and they want to do it, but they don't really go after it when you surround yourself with people that are doing it every day, you get reminded, you get, you get given permission that, Hey, this is a real deal. This is a real career. Uh, this is also a love and a craft. Um, and so you got to show up. So I, I always say, if you're in the, if you're the best songwriter in the room, you're in the, you're in the wrong room. Um, so man, Nashville's great. You go down there and you just surround yourself. It's like, man, I got some work to do and it's okay <laughs> to be inspired. And, and uh, I like sharpening that, that knife and, and just make them fill myself up to get better and learn from people and, um you'll definitely you know i think you find a community of people that are willing to pour into you and th when that happens you can really start moving the needle and that's pretty special but yeah it is it's just a grind man it's part yeah. of it's just the grind <laughs> no exactly um you kind of just touched up on one of the keywords to bring up one of the next uh questions here is inspiration and inspiring and stuff like that um obviously you have some songs out and stuff like that obviously you've been songwriting for a while and stuff like that but like who do you kind of look up to in the music business like when you first really started and just like now who like kind of really inspires you to just keep working on that music 
Yeah, man. Um, who do I who do I look up to? Is such an interesting question to me. Uh, I have so many, I have so many people in my life that aren't musicians that I kind of look toward for mentorships, and I've always been drawn to people outside of the industry, so they can kind of have a blind look at what's going on and really give me some examples. I will say, um, I had a moment in my life, and uh, shout out to Channing Wilson. Um, I've told Channing this once. I don't know if he'd ever remember it because it was late at night uh, someplace, but, and it sounds kind of like a cliche story, but um, there's a place called uh, Revival 615 and it used to be at Tin Roof of Mumber Inn um, down in Nashville. And when I first came down there, I was recording some songs and demoing some songs. And um, I actually went down as an audio engineer and produced a couple songs for people. And somebody said, man, you got to go check this thing out. And uh, so it's the first time in my life I went into a room. Um, three dudes were sitting on the church pew and they were sharing songs. And Channing was sharing some of his music. And he actually like quieted the room down by telling them like, hey, guys, like shut up. Like we're here for a songwriter round. And that just spoke to me, man. And on that night, I remember just sitting there and realizing like these people love songwriting as much as I do. And uh, that really changed my heart and my life to like, no, I'm going to take this serious. Uh, and uh, songwriting is everything, man. And so Channing is somebody that, you know, that moment was a big deal for me. So as far as like looking up to somebody, um, I've never been, I think it because again, it was like kind of that punk rock spirit. Like I never grew up a guy that was like, man, I love, I love the way, you know, Garth Brooks writes this song and plays this song. So I'm going to play it like that. And I, or I know, you know, John Mayer, I love the way he plays guitar. So I'm going to play it like that. I've always just loved songwriting. So like I'd pick up my guitar, I'd play a little bit and then I'd write a song or I'd learn a lick and I'd play a little bit and I'd write a song. Um, and I'm learning, you know, the more I'm in my career that I, I was never one of those people that really like you mimic people and you get inspired yeah. by people. Um, uh, Chris Caraba from Dashboard Confessional is somebody that I was just obsessed with as a kid and his lyrics. And I find that more in my my writing. Right. But I never wanted to go up and be on stage and copy it because I'm an entertainer at the end of the day. I love being on stage. I love performing. Yeah. So I think I took pieces more from their show. Tom DeLong from Blink-182, Alan Jackson, Johnny Cash. There's a giant picture of Johnny Cash up on my wall here. Like, I think I just saw what they did as a as a, as a a whole. Mm -hmm. And I would do that and not mimic them just musically. Um, yeah. So I just think I get, get inspired by everybody that, that makes cool art. Like right. they're making good stuff. I'm, I'm about it. I'm going to support it. No. And that's awesome. I mean, that's just, that's really cool and unique. Cause a lot of people don't say that when I ask them this question. So it's just cool to kind of hear that side of the aspect on who really inspires you. Um, yeah, man. I always scratch my head too. And all these guys, you know, I I'm 34 and just as, just as getting real honest on the podcast, like, <laughs> I'm 34, man. But, and so, you know, I grew up, I didn't have cable growing up, but my, my best friend had MTV two TRL was huge. And anybody that's my age and younger, um, I, I will say there's some older, older guys that got away with this, but like, you know, you hear all these country guys like, man, just used to listen to Merle Haggard records and put on the vinyl and it would change our life. It's like, dude, you know, that you were listening to Papa Roach kid rock was put limp biscuit was putting out some records uh you know you were you you wanted to be garth brooks like like that was that time but it's funny that everybody always wants to give you that like yeah man will wailing and wailing they changed my life it's like yeah when you were 12 watching <laughs> power rangers like for you but anyway i mean maybe it's just, just i'm getting a little, a little too real here on a sunday night <laughs> no nah, you're good man you're good no i'm loving it on the podcast here this is this is the energy i needed i've done like six interviews today this is the kind of vibe and energy i needed to kind of end the night <laughs> um, kind of getting into the third question. I think we kind of touched up on it a little bit, like when you were just talking about kind of like songwriting and stuff like that, because I mean, I know for me per se, when it comes to the creative process and just songwriting in general, is just like always telling a story behind the lyrics and putting emotion into that. And that's how a lot of people know how I came up in songwriting, um, a few years ago when my grandfather passed away in 2018, um, is when I first wrote my first ever song. I mean, I was kind of writing before then never really had anything big before that mm -hmm. but um just everyone's creative process is so cool and unique sometimes because so many people do it differently whether it's some people start with a melody and they're like okay i can kind of write to this and then some people just start with choruses and start with verses and i always shout them out on every episode now just because i live by this quote now is garrett walker 
um, good buddy of mine, country artist. He's just grinding right now, playing a lot of shows, but he said, it's like a puzzle. You have 500 pieces, you have a thousand pieces all scrambled up on the board. And then by the time you're kind of putting those pieces together and then you have that masterpiece when it's fully done and you just sit there and look at it and you have something that you started from the beginning to the end. So kind of my question is, is like, what is your creative process like when it comes to writing a song? Obviously, I know you had that EP that just came out not too long ago. And just how does the whole songwriting process work for you? Yeah, man, uh, that's I love that puzzle puzzle uh, analogy. That, that's really good. Um, for me, I think I'm think I've always been a big believer of there's no right answers um, and uh, or there's no wrong answers. You know, it's all right. All right. All right. All right. All uh, right. And I think uh, that's really been my true journey because growing up and, and being around, you know, I've been in writing rooms with some, some bigger writers that have had big giant radio cuts and they do it one way. And you can be in another room with somebody that, you know, on a chart looks the same as their success and they do it a completely other way. Um, but as far as inspiration, I'm a, I'm a huge con, con I love conversation. Like podcasts are so amazing because we get to sit here for, you know, 20, 30 minutes and just talk and, mm -hmm. and, the next thing you know, you'll pick up on something. And that was a big piece of when we were off the road and we couldn't tour in 2020 that I realized it wasn't, it wasn't the lights in the show and it was, it was people. Mm -hmm. And I missed having conversations with my fans. I missed sitting at the merch table for an hour and connecting and talking and, and building real, real actual relationships with people. Yeah. Um, and that's an art in itself and it can get, you know, crazy, but conversations is where it always has been for me. So I love to talk. Um, you know, I, lo I love uh, me and my wife were like community group junkies in church for a while. Like we loved it. It changed our life. And and so being in that environment, and studying together and sharing together, um, I think that's really where my inspiration always is. Mm -hmm. um, and then knowing that there's no there's no wrong answers. There's some right. There's some rules that you can follow. Um, but you got to learn the rules so you can use the rules or you can destroy the rules, you know, and, and that kind of path. Um, yeah, man, I think that's, I don't know if that's exactly the inspirational piece, but conversations always come up. But somebody, anybody asked me a question about what inspires you, it's just like, man, I love to talk. I love to yeah. hang on and build and, and get to know people and it's stories where we're on this earth to live live life, you know, together through that journey. And uh, exactly. there, there's nothing, there's a song on my, my latest record uh, called um, God Write Me a Song. And that mm -hmm. song is about the fact that I was, I was walking into a publishing company to write a song one day, this was 2019. And I stopped, literally stopped. I know, I know the building. I know exactly where I was. It was one of those moments, like the, the movie made itself right there. And yep. I, I remember looking up and I asked God, I said, God, just give, give us a song today. Like, give me something. Mm -hmm. But what I realized was at that time I was borderline into that. Like I needed it. I didn't want it. I was, I was crossing over to like, a little desperation and that was that was not good and and so on, we wrote a song that day uh it wasn't the greatest song ever like a little tenacious d shout out but on the way back home up north i was driving and i just started laughing and and uh you know and kind of chuckling and i realized that i think god was telling me like man i've given you your wife your boys love heartache pain uh you've been through some dark times you've been through some amazing times and so I stopped and I was like, man, like God already gave me, he gave, he gave us, he gives us everything that we need to write those songs. And um, so, yeah, that was, that's pretty inspiring on that, that front too, just being open to the world and the songwriting muscle is like, it's always happening. It's always, right. always, you know, so I already wrote that puzzle thing down. I'm going to write about that later. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. No, I mean, I love Garrett when he said that it just hit me different because not yeah. a lot of people come up with stuff like that. And it's just the way he said it. And then like, I could just picture that the minute he said that. So it just, it sounds so to me cool. like his, he's got that songwriting muscle going all the time, you know? <laughs> exactly. No, I'll tell you, he is, he has a lot of good music coming out soon. Um, he's coming mm -hmm. out with an acoustic EP soon, I believe. And it's just, he is one hell of a songwriter. I'll tell you that. Amazing, man. Yeah. I'll check it out for sure. Yeah. Um, so obviously with, there's so many different artists out there. It doesn't matter what genre you're in, whether you're in rap, pop, country, um there's just so many people out there trying to promote themselves trying to just work their grind build their fan base and just connect with people um so at the end of the day I always ask this question because it's one of the hardest questions I ask is what would you say makes you you at the end of the day like what like when you're with your song you have that EP out you have some singles out and stuff but like with all these other people out there putting stuff out there what makes Noah Smith Noah Smith 
Yeah, man, this is uh, I just flashed back to sitting in a therapy chair into 2020. <laughs> uh, one thing I've learned about myself, man, and and I really think in the last two years of my life, I grabbed a hold of it. Um, but then I looked back on my life and I realized, you know, when I was a kid and we were out on our BMX bikes building jumps, you know, we build some jumps. The next thing you know, everybody get bored and go play PlayStation. I'd be out still building the jump and patting the dirt down. I'd look left or right. And same thing, we build like snow snow jumps when we were uh, skiing and everybody would get bored and they'd take off and I'd still be patting it down and patting it down. And uh, what I learned in my life looking back and I do believe that who I am as a person and I think it comes out in my art and my community with my fans, shout out to the big old family, um, also came out in therapy. <laughs> well, uh, was me learning, uh, therapy's cool, by the way. Everybody should go, go to therapy if you need to. Uh, I'm, I'm an includer. I'm an, I'm an includer. I love to um, facilitate and include and create community. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I leaned into launching my coaching community, the Long Cut Mindset, because I was like, this is what I'm designed to do, man, is pour into other people. I'm about my own music and I want my career to shine. And, and that's my main thing. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Um, but I learned, you know, that that was it because I got gut punched when, uh, like I said, it wasn't because we lost dates and it wasn't because we, you know, the money necessarily, but it was the inertia of community and pouring into that and getting poured into myself and learning from other people and growing. I'm, you know, consistently learning constantly growing uh, but i think my art shows that my recording showed that i used my road band for this last record uh, my fans you know the the hardcore group of them it's called the big old family b-i-g-o-l family um and man they're just this inclusive group of people that are believing in not just my music but the journey that i'm on and, and i think that's that's really i hope that's what separates me because it's what gets me excited and i always search for that in other people um and yeah, so I, I'm a, you know, it's an inclusive thing here. I want, I want it to be an us. I want people to come in with us. And, you know, I might, I'd, I'd rather play, you know, 50 dates with, with 250 people in a room singing along than, than 10 opening for 6,000. Uh, you know, that's, that's just, I can, I can go into those rooms and impact and we all can grow when we live our lives. And like, you look around, it's like, this is an amazing thing that we get to do. Yeah. I want to play stadiums and, 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 uh, too like that's on my that let's do that uh, but being in those rooms with people you know sweat and lights and smoke like that's what I fell in love with and that's what I'm gonna fight for every day and uh, I think the types of people that gravitate towards my music are those real searchers you know the front row or don't go kind of folks shout out to Ray's Rowdy uh but like you know just in it in the pit like let's go let's live life this is part of it and man, there's music fans that are like that too. They got hit just as hard as we did, uh, exactly. not going to shows. And that that whole ecosystem just shut down. And it's been kind of scary for some people. I, I think we're on our way back, but it's still, it's just new now. We just, we just got to figure it out and be grateful for what we have. No, exactly. And I mean, just kind of like when everything did shut down, that's like, I was kind of like on the same boat. I wanted to give people music and that's what I wanted to do. So I started the interview series, but then I was also hosting showcases too. And I was having like kind of live concerts via the internet over YouTube, Instagram, Facebook yeah, and man. stuff like that, just to give people that feel for live music because we all lost that and we all enjoyed doing that and just giving Amazing. people back the music was just it was something that meant a lot to me and it meant a lot to those artists too because they were like hell yeah like I want to start playing for people again like this is like yeah. a little live concert and it was just it, it's awesome to just really do that kind of stuff and bring everyone together like what you're kind of doing amazing man amazing yeah um so obviously we've been talking about your whole journey we've been reminiscing on some memories and stuff like that but what's the future hold for you? Like, where do you want to go with your music? Like, where do you want to go with everything that you're doing? And just like, what else can we expect down the road? I know you have the EPL, but obviously do we have more music coming and just what at the end of the day, what's down the road for Noah Smith? Yeah, man, I, we, we're definitely going to be putting out new music. Um, and that's not just saying, cause we want to, they're the plans in, in plan, the, the plans in motion, if you will. Um, you know, when we were sitting around, we we would I would get lot go live on Zoom with my band every Monday night, uh, pretty much for like six months, uh, pretty solid. And uh, we would show up and we would just show up for each other and we would talk and and be a part of you know each other's lives. We would talk about music, but then we would just talk about life. And 
we would always speculate like what's going to happen what's going to and and you know how long is this thing going to last and it was we didn't know at that time and we still you know in a lot of ways don't know uh and the one thing i said i said man the one thing that we can control is we can make we can make things and uh you know the the key word to productivity is to produce like you have to produce something and so uh i've leaned real heavy and hard into this studio space and just uh let's just make so we're going to be recording more we're kind of uh resetting after the new year but new music's going to be coming uh, my new fan membership uh, that I launched last year, a new experience for music fans is what it's called. It's going to be opening back up. I'm going to lean in really big into that. Also, my uh, my coaching community, the Long Cut Mindset. If you go to noahsmithcoaching.com, uh, there's information on it there. I'm learning. I'm a songwriter, but like I'm learning how to be that person in that community and help facilitate it. And uh, it's really exciting. Uh, coaching's got me really, really excited every day just to make content. I'm sharing a ton of my story. I have a whole video library that we're making. We've already made a bunch of content for it. We're making more lessons. And um, But one of the coolest things we do once a month in that is uh, we do a mastermind where we just get together with the community and we share what do people need? What can we help each other with? What resources? You know, So that kind of stuff has me really excited. Um, but definitely new music, new shows. I'm also, I would, I would hate to hang up on this call and not talk about this. I'm also hosting a, a songwriter round, man, coming in from Cincinnati once a month into Nashville. Uh, I'm hosting the crooner circus once a month at live Oak. Um, so right awesome. down there, you know, down in midtown, which is like four places down from where revival 615 was. So it's kind of a cool, I've never said this out loud, but that that's kind of badass. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, I have a songwriter round I posted in Cincinnati called the crooner circus. Um, I'm failing, man. People always tell you to talk about one thing that you're doing. I just talked about like 10. So uh, no, feel, that's all good. We want to know what you're doing. We yeah, I feel super focused stuff, about but... that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, my uh, my links and stuff are, you know, everywhere. Noah Smith music, Noah Smith music dot com. Mm -hmm. um, you can find everything on my Instagram link as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, we're just cooking. We're just making. I'm grateful. Uh, I lead worship at my church also. So it's uh i'm just making music and seeing where this thing goes and believing in people it's pretty cool no that's awesome and i mean i've been listening to a lot of your music since we started talking and stuff like that and i've been following you for a while and like i'm just i'm on the journey with you and like i dig a lot of your songs that you have out i was just listening to some stuff i was listening to cigarettes and jesus a little while ago Thank but we you, hopped yeah. on here and um I'm, I'm yeah, i'll show you I'm, i'll grab this real quick here you got the uh the, this is the pack of uh Marble. that's how it started yeah, well, this is the video. So there's no cigarette smoked out of here. That was, I just put it in there. I, I mean, I'll smoke every once in a while, but yeah. uh, my mom called me after she saw the music video for Cigarettes and Jesus. She's like, you were smoking in a video? I was like, nope, there they all are. But <laughs> yeah, this is this is the pack from that video. <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's always cool just to keep little memorabilia like that, just from your different songs and stuff. Um, but obviously talking about your songs, talking about music um, and kind of wrapping up the interview here a little bit is... A song from you um i'll kind of let you just take the floor if you want to perform a little song for us kind of end the night and yeah I'll just, man i'll put myself on mute and i'll just kind of let you take the floor do whatever you want to do talk about the song play a little bit and floor's yours yeah man let's do it I, I, that sounds uh sounds great i'm totally unprepared right like, <laughs> <laughs> So the winter, the winter cold's coming in. Like we, we haven't had, we've had like one major snow, but um, not like it has been up north. But tonight's the night, I think. So. Oh really? Um, I was gonna be all goofy out of tune here. <laughs> had it outside earlier, but yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. And uh, woohoo! I appreciate you having me on. Let me get this tuned up real quick. Yeah, no, absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time to just be on the interview and just getting your story out there. I just, I really appreciate it. That would be a good spot. Put some, put some advertisements or something up there. <laughs> no, exactly. I need to start getting sponsors and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, man. That's awesome. I tell you what, dude, I, I have a brand new record that just came out um, called Ain't So Bad Around Here. You can stream it everywhere. Um, but since you just brought up cigarettes and Jesus, I, I think I'll play that. That's my single that I put out one of my singles. And, uh, um, I'm looking at that, like I'm like ready to smoke. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, man, this song's called cigarettes and Jesus. I wrote this with, uh, Ash Taylor is, is an artist also in Nashville by way of Bakersfield, California, An incredible songwriter, uh, her and her husband, Chris, Chris is a beast guitar player. Um, but I wrote this with Ash and uh, I'm really grateful that this one came out during um, 
right smack down at dab in the middle of the pandemic but the the rocket was already launched so we we're like let's just keep putting it out got a ton of love and uh it's gotten kind of more love than any song that i put out um but you know got a couple more singles and stuff that, that came out after that but this one's kind of special and it's a sunday night so um after a week in nashville and then leading worship this is exactly what what this song is about it's called cigarettes and jesus i hope you love it I've seen the light from heaven in a neon sign and I felt the burn from getting high on Saturday night I heard Sunday morning coming down the church choir would sing about amazing grace how he died for me you know I can't live without cigarettes and Jesus always pick me up I can't put them down I can't live without them I've been heaven sent and hell bound from the Marlboro red letters written in red I'm a front row center like the preacher said I need a double shot of whiskey and forgiveness man I don't want to quit cigarettes and Jesus Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John remind me of what the gospel said. Jack and Jim and Maker's Mark, man, they always help me forget. What a mess I'm in, cause the good Lord knows if it was up to me. I'd blow it all up in smoke, cigarettes and Jesus. I was pick me up, I can't put them down. I can't live without them. I've been heaven sent and hell bound. From the Marlboro red letters written in red. I'm a front row sinner like a preacher said. I need a double shot of whiskey and forgiveness. Man, I don't want to quit. Cigarettes and cheese. Cigarettes and Jesus Cigarettes and Jesus Always pick me up, I can't put them down I can't live without them I've been heaven sent and hell bound Marlboro Red Letters I'm a front row sinner, like the preacher said. I need a double shot of whiskey and forgiveness. Man, I don't want to quit. Oh, what a mess I'm in. I don't want to quit. Cigarettes and Jesus. Cigarettes and Jesus. <laughs> awesome job man thank you so much for yeah that, man honestly. thank you very much That's... i don't know if you saw me i mean obviously i'm your only fan here tonight on the uh interview but once people see this i was jamming out over there to that honestly <laughs> just su yeah, such, a good, it, yeah. such a good such a good appreciate you checking out the music too man it's always good no of course um just again thank you so much for this thanks for playing a little song for us obviously people need to go check him out he is just truly an amazing person gifted songwriter gifted singer and cigarettes and jesus is definitely one i recommend on go and listen to but go listen to everything he has because it's definitely worth it and you won't regret it um but other than that man that kind of concludes the night here on the interview um Awesome. obviously i think you kind of mentioned everything is just at like noah smith music on everything everything's noah smith music yeah, yeah. perfect and then um oh uh, yeah sorry instagram tiktok all that fun stuff yeah yeah uh, i th i think my tiktok yeah it's i'm pretty sure it's all the same noah <laughs> smith music um yeah it is yeah i was whenever there's something new go out I, I lock it down pretty good so i actually have the uh uh federal trade is this on the interview is what 
is this part of the interview or are we out of the interview <laughs> no, no 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 we're still no we're still going we're still going <laughs> yeah yeah dude uh so this is crazy but uh I actually have the federal trademark on Noah Smith, which is wild. But uh, yeah, so, you know, I had to, had to lock it down a few years ago. But yeah, no, uh, it's actually it's funny that you say that because um, another kid I had on the interview series, he's from New Hampshire, a good family friend of mine. His name is actually Noah Smith. Yeah. But, um, so when he started getting into music and stuff, he wanted to do that. He wanted to do Noah Smith music, but you had already locked it down. So oh, he, he talked about it, dude. Yeah. So I'll tell you my story. There's a guy, he's an actor named Noah Smith. And since I've been, you know, I was in high school, I graduated in 05. Uh, you know, in, the internet had been here, but it really took a hold of our society at that point. And there's a guy named Noah Smith, noahsmith.com. He's an actor. And uh, I've actually talked to him about buying his domain before, but like, even when I was in high school, I couldn't get it. But man, there's tons of Noah's popping up now. Like, yeah. I feel like every Brian and Jason of the world at this point, you know, but uh, but it's pretty cool. There's a drummer out there that's named Noah Smith. That's a beast. But yeah, Noah Smith music is, is where everything's at. Yeah, no. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's just funny because we were talking about that um, when he did the interview and we were talking about it afterwards and stuff because he goes by Noah Hudson now just because Noah Smith uh, right was already on, right taken. On. So, dude, I've I've actually reached out to a couple people that I, I'll get pop, I'll, I'll get popped it. You know, my name will get tagged and they'll tag me and I'll kind of check out what they're doing and realize like, man, they're, they're doing something pretty cool. And, um, because I have that and I had that because somebody, you know, really wasn't here in this point at one point and wanted to use my name. And I was like, well, we got to lock this down, but I've actually, you know, I shoot a DM and say, Hey man, just checking in with you and letting you know, like, here's what I'm doing. This is what I'm at about. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, and it's just going to hurt us both. You know, um, mm -hmm. it'd be like, it's like being in a band with, with somebody, um, I know that's people's names. It's that's my name, uh, right. but it's a business at the end of the day. And this pays for my family, my, my band, my, my, uh, you know, my crew, whenever we have one, my team, when we have one. And so I've done that, I've reached out and just gave them a shout out. Like, Hey guys, like I'm not, you know, I'm not dropping something crazy, but just let you know, here we are. And, and usually the conversation goes really well. And they're like, they actually, I've had many of them say, dude, thank you. Because how bad would that have got if you know how to put something out? No, um, exactly there is a noah smith that puts out like like instrumental music and like it keeps it pops up still but i can't figure out who that person is to like but yeah if anybody knows they let me know <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely nah so just kind of um concluding with the night again thank you so much man for taking the time to do this i really appreciate it um i just can't wait for people to hear some new music from you go check out your stuff now and um that's about it you all know yeah, the man, say we get up to Boston soon and do some shows. That'd be great. No, absolutely. Come up to Boston and hang out, write a little song, play a little music. Yeah, I'm Sounds in. I'm good. in. Let's go. <laughs> no, absolutely. It sounds good to me. Um, so that kind of concludes another episode of the Spotlight Series here tonight with Noah Smith. Um, you all know the drill is every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can check out a new artist. Um, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in.